welcome to episode 22 of the Wool Needles Hands podcast. My name is Taylor and I am going to be your host. This is a podcast primarily about knitting, but we do get up to other fiber related topics from time to time. I am coming to you from Henderson, Nevada. That's where I'm from and where I live with my husband, Brandon, our three-year-old son, Angus, our big fat house cat, Oscar. And in only a few weeks, we are expecting another member of our family, a little baby boy whom we are calling Ronan. That's really exciting. So I'm gonna be excited to introduce him to you when he arrives. You can find me on Instagram. My Instagram is at WoolNeedlesHands. I also have an Instagram linked to my hand-dyed yarn business, which is Fiber for the People Hand-Dyed Yarn, and that is at fiber.for.the.people. If you'd like to get in touch, you can email me at WoolNeedlesHands at gmail.com. You can also get in touch with me via Ravelry. My Ravelry name is also WoolNeedlesHands, and we do have a Ravelry group connected to the podcast. Just go to the Groups tab and search Wool Needles Hands, a knitting podcast, or Wool Needles Hands, and you should be able to find our Ravelry group. Definitely head over to the Ravelry group and join. We have lots of fun conversation going on over there. We have a year-long knit-along going on right now, which I'll talk about in just a moment. It's just a really great place to get involved in a little corner of the fiber community. If you'd like to learn more about Fiber for the People yarn, you can definitely head over to the website, which is my online shop for Fiber for the People yarn. It is fiberforthepeopleyarn.com. There is a shop update coming this Friday, March 2nd at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you'd like to learn more about all the yarny goodness that's going to be in that shop update, just click the link that pops right up here and hold that off in your browser and you can watch that when the podcast is over. In that video, I explain and show all the fun yarn that's gonna be in the upcoming shop update update for Fiber for the People. Thank you so much for stopping by to check out the podcast. If you are a new viewer and subscriber, welcome. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to check out my little corner of YouTube. If you are a returning subscriber, as always, thank you so much. Coming back time and time again as I upload episodes to watch and see what's going on over here in my neck of the woods. I appreciate all the support that you guys give to this podcast. It's really what keeps this going. Please don't forget to subscribe, give a thumbs up. It's really, really important to helping this podcast grow. And I am so very grateful for all of that that you guys do for the podcast. So we're gonna be doing things a little bit differently here at the Wool Needles Hands channel on YouTube. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit about what's gonna be um, kind of upcoming here on the channel. This episode is actually going to be a rather short episode compared to my previous episodes um, in the past. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I would like to make a podcast episode that is a more manageable length, not only for me to record, but for viewers to watch as well. Our previous episodes of the podcast were over an hour and a half long, um, an hour and a half to over an hour and a half long. And that takes me twice as long to produce uh, to, or to film, I should say. And then it takes me a long time to edit those and get them up. And not only that, it is a big commitment and a time investment to watch an entire episode. It's really important to me, however, that I provide the same content on my channel that I have in my long episodes of the podcast. Lots of the great segments that I talk about, various different things. I am going to continue those segments. However, what I'm planning on doing is maintaining the knitting podcast here, just like always. You're gonna have an episode every two weeks it, uh, as you know planned, unless there's some reason why I need to push that back, like a baby coming soon. The podcast will remain a pretty basic knitting podcast structure um, that you're familiar with. I have a lot of extra segments that I like to include in my podcast. For example, I like to do my Fiber for the People yarn segment, itty bitty nitty gritty little questions segment, tips from the dyeing studio. These are all segments that I really love to include here um, on the podcast in the past, but this time around, I'm gonna try making those separate uploads on the channel, and each of those little segments will kind of have their own individual style as to how I present them to you. That way, the podcast stays a manageable length, not only for you, the viewer, but for me um, as well, and then we can also still enjoy all the various different content segments that I provide on the podcast previously, but in a little bit more of a readily accessible format. Format. So this is just something I'm trying right now. So the podcast is actually going to be rather short compared to my previous ones, but definitely more manageable to watch in a single sitting. And then all of those other segments that I love to make and bring to you guys and that you guys clearly really enjoy watching, those will still be on the channel as separate uploads, which will be uploaded to the YouTube channel um, 
either at the same time or right around the same time that I upload the podcast episode. So just keep your eyes on the channel and see as it comes um, the various different episodes, but you are gonna start seeing the segments uploaded separately and we're gonna see how that works. So bear with me as I try something new. I really, I'm excited about it because I think it's going to be easier for me to provide you with the content, um, making it readily accessible for you. And also, um, as I kind of look to the future, uh, considering we are going to have a new little baby in the family in just a few short weeks, um, I st I'm starting to think about how I can make sure that I am able to um, continue to bring a podcast to you and continue to bring content to you guys because I love to do it so much. I wanna provide you with that content and this space here where we can chat about knitting. I wanna be able to provide you with that content on a regular basis and not have it become something that becomes really challenging with a little baby. And I think by breaking it down into manageable chunks like this, it's not only going to be easier for the viewers to watch um, in a more reasonable time schedule, but also for me to produce. And so that's kind of my way of ensuring that I can continue to bring content even during the upcoming you know months that are gonna be a little bit more busy around here but that we can also make it a little bit more manageable when it comes to viewing so I'm really excited about that so keep your eyes peeled because those segments will be uploaded and you will be able to watch those right along with the podcast you can just add them to your queue and watch them as they come through or you can add them to your watch later and you can watch them on your own time <music> We have a knit along going on right now and it is the Wool Needles Hands Year of Hats knit along. The hashtag for this knit along is hashtag WNH Year of Hats KAL 2018. The whole purpose of this knit along is to knit a different hat design every month with a grand total, if you participate in the entire knit along, which you do not have to, of 12 hats at the end of the year. We are currently in February and February's hat was to knit um, a hat design for a member of the opposite sex, whether it be uh, your significant other, if it's your family member, however that um, translates to you, that's what we're working on for February. February is really close to wrapping up. I am so excited at all of the amazing finished objects that have already been submitted in the Ravelry thread. I'm gonna share those with you guys in just a second. Upcoming is the March portion of the knit along and that is to knit a hat for a baby. The reason I decided to make March the month of hat knitting for babies is because we are expecting our baby on the 29th of March. And so I thought it was appropriate for that um, purpose. And now one of the questions that was asked about knitting hats for babies is what is the age gap here that we're talking about? Is it, I mean, how how old are we just going to toddler, um, which I guess is between two and three and how is that exactly working? So I think that I. I would just say, you know, anything between infant to a uh, two-year-old would be your hat for a baby. Um, I don't know. If you have any questions about that, I mean, just let me know. But I kind of think that that's a reasonable uh, age gap for a baby hat, uh, essentially. So I would just stick to anywhere from infant to two and we'll call that baby hat knitting. But in the meantime, we are finishing up the February hats and I wanna remind you guys the prize that is going to be offered at the end of February for the finished object that is chosen randomly from the Ravelry thread. The winner of the February portion of the knit along is going to receive this adorable project bag by Franka Lee, which is Tracy Utley on Etsy. It is ugh, so cute. I love this fox print with all the fun little, you know, the fox is wearing the different clothes, menswear, I guess you could say. It's just really, really cute. It's got the great handle. I love the contrasting zipper. It's got a really nice soft interior box bottom. Really, really well made. Love, love, love these project bags. They're excellent, excellent quality. I'm really excited to give this away. In addition to this, I'm also going to be including a little package of stitch markers, also by Tracy at Frankly, and they are just cute little um, stitch markers with little sentiments on them and some gemstones, really, really precious. So this will also be in the February prize for that portion of the knit along. And I'm really excited to give that to a lucky winner. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at some of these finished objects that have come through for the February portion of the Wool Needles Hands Year of Hats knit along over on the Wool Needles Hands Ravelry group. <laughs>
love, love, love everything that you guys are doing. S keep it coming. I, it's just so inspiring to see all of the different hats that you guys are knitting. I've gotten so many ideas of different hat projects that I want to work on because of the hats that I see coming through. It's just, it's the best. It's so inspiring. So I'm really excited to see how this wraps up and all of the other hats that come through. And then I'm also super stoked to see what comes through from March for baby hat knitting. In the last episode of the podcast, as a way to kind of celebrate my dive into crochet with a granny stripe blanket, I decided to offer kind of like a giveaway um, trivia question prize type deal that I wanted to share with you guys. And so I asked you a question and it was the earliest form of crochet was done using a hooked what? And all you had to do was fill in the blank. I had several different types of answers um, and every single one of the answers in one way or another was correct. I was looking for a particular answer, but when I did my random number generator, it didn't matter whether the answer was the one that I came up with or if you had an answer that was also an acceptable answer, I just went with the person who came up with the random um, number and that's kind of what I went with. But I was really impressed with all of the different answers that you guys provided. You could tell that some of you did the research um, some of you actually seem to know the answer I was looking for and it didn't look like you had done any research It was just something that you assumed would have been the case and I was pretty impressed by that The answer that I was actually expecting was a hooked finger um, That was what the earliest forms of crochet uh, was done with in where based on what I found um, online, but the other responses um, I think it was like bone um, other like sticks um, there are lots of various different answers and I think they were all pretty much right um, But the one that I was expecting was the hooked finger, but it didn't really matter I just went with the person who came up in my random number selection and they are going to be receiving a little package of minis that are curated by row one high quality yarns So this is the little bundle of minis Love it so much. These are the this is the exact collection of minis that I use to start my granny stripe blanket. Um, same colors and everything. And these all come from Northbound Knitting, which is the hand dyer behind these little minis. They're also going to receive a little package here that tells about the yarn dyer. So they'll have a little package here, and it comes in a cute little drawstring bag from Row One high quality yarns. All of that comes together in this little package. And to sweeten the deal, I am also including an e-hook by Clover. This is a Clover Armor um, e-hook. It's the soft touch um, handle grip right here, which is really, really nice and comfortable. It's the type of hook that I am using for my granny stripe and I really, really love it. So this will be coming your way as well in addition to the package of minis. So if you choose, you could start your own granny stripe blanket. So without further ado, the winner is Rose Y. That is her YouTube handle and that is the name that was underneath the comment. She has provided the comment a hooked finger. So that was pretty impressive that she seemed to guess that it sounded like. But congratulations, Rose. Get in touch with me via woolneedleshands at gmail.com. Let me know that you are the winner so that I can get this out to you as soon as possible. So it is a really cold and windy night right now. I'm actually home by myself. My husband Brandon took Angus to dinner with his grandpa. It's kind of a fundraiser family night for the baseball team that my husband coaches. And so they're there having a good time, a guy's night out, and I'm able to sit down and hang out with you guys and have a cup of tea and podcast. And so I'm really thankful for this time. Um, you may notice that the last few episodes of the podcast have been filmed after dark and with um, all of the different things that I have going on for the shop and for potty training my son, which is kind of something that we're working on right now, plus getting things prepared for um, the new little one. This is my podcasting time. This is kind of what's worked out for me. So it's kind of nice, it's cozy, it's calming, and it's a perfect time to have a nice cup of tea. And tonight I am um, drinking this cup of tea out of a brand new um, mug which was just given to me by my dearest friend, Lauren, who um, was visiting just this last weekend from California. It is a cup and it says Aries on the front. That is my astrological sign. And it has the little ram on the inside of the cup that you can see back here. And then on the back, it says confident, courageous, adventurous, 
in the really pretty gold foil lettering and I love it. It's perfect. I can fit my whole hand into the handle and she says that she knew that that was what I loved and that uh, she made sure that this cup had that. So I'm really, I'm loving this cup. It's really a perfect go-to tea cup, I think. It's, it's a lar, it's a mug, I guess, so it's good for coffee too, but I really, really love it. So Lauren, if you're watching, thank you so much. And in my mug right now, I'm actually drinking, I'll set this down so I can show you. Now this, the entire packaging is French, so I, I'm really terrible at attempting to speak French, but um, I picked up this tea to include in the Fiber for the People yarn order packages, and I love it. And I primarily chose it because I love the color of the tea bag, but I love orange blossom and honey tea, and that's what this is. So this is, I don't have the box anymore, so I'm just gonna show you the wrapper. So this is by Mason Tail I you guys, listen, I don't even want to try and attempt to read to you. I'm going to see, you can, you can see if you can figure out what it says on your own, but <laughs> it is a French name um, and it is Relax Tea and it is Orange Blossom and Honey. And that much I know that this is an Orange Blossom and Honey Tea. I really love it. I've tried it before. It's delicious. Um, I love kind of sending fun new teas like this in the yarn order packages, especially when they're colorful. I try to color coordinate the tea bags with the yarn because I'm kind of crazy like that, I guess, but I do really love this. And it's a nice calming tea in orange blossom and honey. It's just perfect. Yeah, it's it's almost, it reminds me a little bit of the tea that you get if you go eat at like an authentic Chinese food restaurant and they bring out like a jasmine tea. Um, now I know that's like a green tea and this isn't a green tea, but it has a similar uh, floral quality to it, which I really love. I love floral f uh, flavored teas, I guess, or floral, um, florally fragrant tea. I don't, you get what I'm saying, but this is just really nice. It's a perfect cup for tonight and when it's calm and quiet at home and it's chilly outside, it's not very strong, it's not very pungent or spicy, it's just a real mellow um, floral tea and I love it. So I get to enjoy it in my new cup and in a house that is empty and quiet right now, so I'm good with that. <laughs> So a Finnish artist by the name of Lisa Heitinen has created a collection of insanely accurate fiber people, full-sized fiber people. And, and that sounds really confusing, and so let me clarify. She has actually, using knitting and crochet, she has created life-size models of various different people whom she has in her neighborhood, in her village where she lives, or her family members. And then those have been put together in an art collection, and it's really, really pretty amazing. The people that she's created, and this was kind of um, kind of went viral when her brother posted his own created um, fiber twin on Reddit. Um, sh the people that she's created are, are really very, um, very lifelike and accurate in the sense of looking just like the people whom they're supposed to depict. So it's, it's really interesting, and I'm gonna show you a little montage of photos in a moment, um, but I thought this was super cool because it's a really cool way to combine not only knitting and crochet, but just the construction of, of the human form to look uh, real, realistic enough that it doesn't look like a puppet. I mean, when you when you put fiber, you know, like almost like when you make those amigurumi stuffed animals, it's very cartoony, it's very puppet-like, but the way that she used color and texture, it's just, it's so lifelike that it almost is a little bit unsettling, but it's really, really very cool. Each fiber person takes her three to four months to create, and in that time, she gets to know her subjects really, really very well, and usually what she does is she sets up a meeting where she can sit with them and she can have a conversation over coffee or tea or whatever it is that suits the situation and she studies their mannerisms, studies their expressions, takes detailed photos so that she can put, patch them together um, later to create her fiber people. And the photos are taken at all different angles so she can be sure to capture the likeness as accurately as possible. It's it's really amazing and I can only imagine the time, um, I mean three to four months, but I'm you know how much of her day is devoted 
to creating these structures. Um, it's, it's, it's really pretty phenomenal. The structures themselves are reinforced with rebar on the inside. That's kind of like the bone structure that keeps them standing. And then they have cement, um, I think, filled in at the base to hold them up when, they, um, when they're standing. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys a montage of the fiber people that were created by Lisa Heitenen. very cool. She, um, Lisa mentions that the, the fiber people are so lovingly accurate that the people whom they're depicting tend to feel as if they know, um, they have like a sense of, of familiarity with the, the construction, you know, with the fiber person, um, because they've kind of been involved in the process from the beginning. And I think that's really interesting. It's oddly, um, romantic in a way, just, I don't know. It's, it's strange, but it's so cool. So another really cool way that knitting and crochet and these fiber crafts are being applied in the art world today. Um, I, you know how much I love that kind of thing. And so I wanted to share that with you guys. So I do have a half object to share with you guys, AKA a hoe. My knitting momentum in the last couple of weeks since I filmed the previous episode of the podcast has slowed a little bit. Like I mentioned earlier, there's been some things going on here. Um, these last few weeks up until the baby is expected have been a little busy. We've been trying to kind of finalize the, the baby room and that space, um, get the things that we need together and get Angus prepared in the sense that we're trying to get him potty trained. Um, we just started so and it's it's starting to go pretty well, but we we're just kind of starting on that and um, that's definitely an adventure and so that's been taking some time and energy and then I've had a shop update in the in the last uh, week or so and preparing for shop updates is becoming a little bit more taxing as it's harder for me to lift things. I need to have my husband help me with that. Um, so these kinds of things take up a lot of time and come the end of the night when I have some time to get a few rows in, that really ends up being how many I can get in before I'm completely zonked and ready to go to bed. So, um, I'm doing my real, my very best. I, I see my projects sitting there and all I want to do is just sit down and knit, knit, knit. And actually today was one of those days where I really had a chance to just kind of focus on my projects and relax, um, which was really, really needed for me. Uh, I'm getting to that point, I feel like, in the uh, pregnancy where um, I run out of breath a little bit easier than normal and, and it just hit me like within the last week. Um, I find that I have to stop every once in a while, take a couple deep breaths, definitely drink lots of water. Um, just because there's not a lot of space in there for like my lungs <laughs> anymore, it seems like. Uh, but yeah, so I'm doing my best. I'm getting as much of it done as I can. I have my baby blanket that I'm currently working on. I'm not going to show it today only because I haven't made a ton of progress since the last time that you saw it. Um, but that's one that I'm, I'm loving working on just because it's so, it's such a relaxing knit, but, but I do have a half object. Uh, let's cut to the chase here. And this is just a vanilla sock. It's a shorty sock that I am knitting, um, or here that I finished knitting out of the jewelry box colorway by Fiber for the People, which is my hand dyed yarn. And I love it so much. Um, I love the yarn. I love the sock. I love knitting vanilla socks. Um, it's kind of just my cup of tea because I, I have a standard formula that I use, which I came up with my formula based on Kate Atherley's um, written tutorial on knitty.com, which is a sock 101. If you're interested, definitely check it out. Um, but it's just, it's pretty basic. It, it, it's easy to follow and to create a vanilla sock uh, at the drop of a hat whenever you need to knit a vanilla sock. It's pretty, it's pretty, uh, it's a great go-to formula for that. So anyway, without further ado, here is my shorty vanilla sock using Fiber for the People yarn. This is the um, jewelry box colorway. I love, love, love this colorway. You know, I really love blue colorways or colorways that have 
undertones of blue and this one is such a nice soothing combination of blues and grays and golds. The speckles in the yarn make for really pretty contrasts throughout and the stitch definition of this yarn is really pretty. This is on my Lofty DK base. It's a DK weight yarn. I'm really digging um, knitting DK weight socks right now. I feel like they fly off the needles um, and they're just super relaxing to knit. Sometimes I feel like going between my DK weight socks that I work on and my fingering weight socks, I love them both, but I always kind of feel like it takes me forever to knit the fingering weight socks after working on a DK weight sock for a while, but it's okay, I love them both. This um, was, when I first popped this off the needles, it was a little bit snug, and I think it's just because it was a 48 stitch sock, and I kind of just eyeballed that number when I cast it on. I was just kind of did the math in my head, knowing that I usually do a 64 stitch sock when I knit on fingering weight yarn with a size one. And so I took it down to a 48 stitch sock on a size two with DK weight yarn because it looked right. So I kind of just improvised the size a little bit and it fit my foot really nicely um, when I was done, but it was just, it was really, really snug um, and not in a too small way, but just in a more snug than I was looking for, for a house sock, I guess you could say. So I blocked it pretty vigorously. These are my, um, or this is my Bryce Bun sock blocker. I love these metal sock blockers. If you are looking for new sock blockers or something that's just really easy to use and dries your socks really fast, these are definitely the way to go. And this is the larger um, of the sizes that I have. I have it in a small and I have it in a medium. And so I blocked this sock using the larger size and it really did a nice job of kind of shaping the sock and sizing it so it fit my foot nicely. Um, so definitely no size issues here. It fits just the way I like. And I just really love the way socks block on those Bryce Bun blockers. They are so nice and smooth. The stitches really just become so straight and orderly and it just, I don't know, it's, it's just the nicest kind of block, I feel. I don't know if you can even like kind of see what I'm saying, but it keeps the sock really, really nice and uh, structured and I love it. It gives it a good clean kind of like crisp crease. And I, I mean, I know socks don't stay like that, but I really like to have that initially at least because it does help with the size of your sock and the fit of your sock when you put it on and start to wear it. Because I feel like that initial wear of your socks after the first block after knitting them is what's really going to determine how the sock will continue to fit your foot. And if you continue to block your sock after you wash it, um, every time that you wash them, I think that's only going to keep them fitting nicely. And so I really... I really love the way that these blockers uh, block the socks. So this is Bryce Bun, B-R-Y-S-P-U-N, and I really, I'm, I kind of swear by these sock blockers. And another reason I really love these is because they have this little hanger right here um, that makes it really easy to hang your socks just about anywhere and let them dry. What I noticed with my previous sock blockers, I have the blue ones that you get from Knit Picks and they have a hole at the top. So you almost have to have like a nail in the wall to hang it on, or you have to have some other form of hanging the sock blocker because there's really no place, you know, that you can just put a sock blocker hanging with just like a, a hole in the top of the sock blocker. It never really worked. And then I have another really cutesy pair of sock blockers that are made of wood and they have a ribbon kind of like a ribbon that you would hang on a hook, same situation. But it's just really hard to find a place to hang sock blockers like that. And that's why I love this because I took it outside and I just, I hang it on one of my planters. I hate, there's so many places that you can hang a sock blocker that has a hanger. So it makes it really, really nice and convenient. And because it doesn't have a flat surface, um, even a flat surface with holes in it, it's just you know, uh, an empty space here, they dry out so much faster. And so it makes, you know, blocking your socks a lot less of an issue. So I definitely love these Bryce Bun sock blockers. Highly, highly recommend them. So if you need some new sock blockers, check it out. You can get them on Jimmy. I think Webs might have them. Yarn.com may sell them, but I got mine on Jimmy Beams. Um, and the prices are pretty reasonable. I think for one set, you're looking at maybe $13. I can't remember, but it's really pretty reasonable. I would recommend getting it in a size that matches your foot size pretty, pretty close and then maybe a size down. Um, 
or I guess if you like to vigorously block your socks, maybe a size up or just get them in all three sizes and then you have them all um, for, you know, whenever you decide to knit socks for somebody with larger feet or smaller feet. I think the small of the Bryce Spun sock blockers is supposed to fit children's feet and then smaller adult feet and then the medium is a more average woman's size and then a large could be a large woman's foot or a man's size. So I have these two and I'm actually thinking about getting the large. My husband has a size 13 foot so when it comes to blocking socks for him I need something a little bit bigger but I haven't knit a ton of socks for my husband which is something I need to work on but that's neither here nor there. So this is just my pair of shorty vanilla socks with the jewelry box colorway by Fiber for the People and I Love it so much, especially loving this DK yarn. It's 100% superwash merino, uh, four ply DK weight yarn, and it's it's really lovely. So that is that. Okay, so I'm going to share with you three of my works in progress that I have been working on pretty regularly in the last couple of weeks since the last time we spoke. I have more than three works in progress going on because who doesn't, right? Unless you're a monogamous knitter, which I am not. I definitely have things going on, but some of those things get put on the back burner and I wait until a time when I'm ready to work on them or they're seasonally appropriate, what have you. Um, but these are the things I've been working on now. And one of them is my husband's hat for the February portion of the Wool Needles Hands Year of Hats Knit Along. This is not finished and it really should be because February is close to being done. But the reason why is because I feel like I waffled back and forth on what I wanted to knit for him. Um, I just couldn't come up with the pattern that really inspired me. I started knitting something which I showed on the last episode of the podcast. I ripped that out because it just wasn't really speaking to me. It was an improvised pattern and I wanted something a little less um, improvised. Um, I couldn't find like an actual written pattern that really struck me. He didn't want something cabled. He didn't... Um, I don't even know really. I, I asked him, you know, would you want something textured? And he's like, well, yeah, I could do something textured, but not like crazy textured. I think he was worried that maybe it would become feminine. And so I sought out a stitch pattern that I thought would be kind of a masculine stitch pattern that would provide some texture to the hat, be interesting to knit. And then I decided to also knit the hat using a different yarn than what I was using before. I was using a worsted weight, 100% um, wool yarn previously. But Brandon has been making a lot of comments about how much he loves the Baby Cakes yarn that I offer in the shop. It's 100% pure baby alpaca and it is so soft, it's ridiculous. And he loves how soft it is. I had a skein of that in my stash that I had kept um, because I wanted to knit a hat using that yarn and it's a real pretty navy. It's in my going out jeans colorway and so I decided to use it for his hat because it's a great color for him and he loved the yarn so much. So that's kind of what I'm doing right now and I don't have a whole lot of the hat finished but this is what I have so far. And I really, really love the texture of this stitch. Now this is the bamboo stitch. Um, I had never knit this stitch before, I've seen it. I can totally see why they call it the bamboo stitch. It kind of has, it looks like a stalk of bamboo going up with these horizontal bars. I really, really love this stitch, you guys. And one of the things I love about it is it has a really pretty texture. It's a nice um, thick texture, but it's super stretchy, so you don't have to worry about it being too constricting. It looks really nice up against a one by one rib. And in this alpaca yarn, I feel like considering an alpaca fiber can tend to be on a little on the fuzzy side with a halo, the stitch definition is really very pretty. So I'm really happy I chose this. And, and quite honestly, this isn't, um, there's no pattern here. I'm not using, a particular hat pattern I am improvising this but all I did was cast it on the appropriate number of stitches to fit his head and then uh, made sure it was a multiple of two and then I just started working the bamboo stitch around so I'm going to just continue to do the bamboo stitch until I get to the length that I think will be good for him and then I will start to decrease but I don't think I'm going to decrease in the bamboo pattern I'm not exactly sure how that would work out um, I haven't made it to that point in my design career yet to figure out how to decrease in pattern like that. I might work something out and see what I can come up with, but otherwise I would just decrease in stockinette um, to, to make the crown and, and move forward. But I really like the way it looks. Now, the reason I chose this was because 
Like I mentioned, I wanted to come up with a stitch pattern that would be suitable for Brandon. He is a very, you know, masculine, manly man. And so I wanted something that I thought would suit him. So I did a quick Google search of masculine stitch patterns and I felt kind of silly doing that, thinking like, who is gonna have this information for me? Like, wh why don't I just find a pattern that I think would look good? Um, but this was the one that came back in a couple different places. And so they said the bamboo stitch provides a really nice masculine texture. I looked at it, I thought it looked really cool. And as soon as I started it, I knew it was just perfect for this hat. So I'm really excited about that. So this is my February submission for the Year of Hats Knit Along. It's knit in 100% pure baby alpaca, which is the baby cakes base that I offer in the shop. This is on the Going Out Jeans colorway. This colorway is available on a die to order basis in the shop right now. I don't um, put it in the shop as a ready to buy in stock yarn, but it is die to order across any base really, but you could also get it on this base as well. I love this. It's a really great navy, you know, dark denim color, but, and the yarn is so soft, you guys. It's just scrumptious. And this is living in, and I, ugh, I love this project bag so much. Um, it's living in this project bag, which was gifted to me by Trisha from Joy in the Stitches. She also donated a project bag just like this, except it has a gray panel, gray quilted panel here, a different kind of quilting motif here. It has the same little accent pocket on the back with different fabric going here. Um, so it's the exact same bag structurally. It just has different colors and patterns. But you guys, these project bags are phenomenal. I love them so much. I wish you could feel how beautiful they are. They have such a nice sturdy texture to them. They have little progress keepers or stitch markers that come on the zippers, both zippers, uh, this one here, as well as the one on the accent pocket um, or notions pocket. They both come with little stitch markers. The inside of the bag is beautiful. The fabric on the inside is really pretty. Just such beautiful construction. So Trisha, thank you so much for this very, very generous project bag gift and for the donation to go along with the knit along, which I'm really excited to provide. Um, definitely check out Joy in the Stitches. I believe she put some of these exact project bags in her shop just recently. Um, I'm not sure if they're sold out or if they're still available, but they're gorgeous. You definitely need one of these in your project bag collection because they're beautiful. I love them so much. My next work in progress is the other half of my jewelry box socks, which I just showed uh, in my half objects segment. And all I have right now is just my little cuff with my jewelry box yarn. I'm actually done with the ribbing and moving on to the ankle portion of the sock. I love this yarn so much. It just, it, it just moves along. I don't know, there's something about the blues and the little speckles that pop out that I love so much. Here is the cake of yarn. So there is the cake. I'm, it's kind of messy right now, but it's a really beautiful blue. You can see those places where the speckles are. I love them. So that's jewelry box. And I do have some beef with this project and it has nothing to do with the project itself as much as it does with the needles. I, I've, I really enjoy the needle tips of the Lika needles but I'm really having um, a difficult time understanding why a needle of the quality of these Lika needles, these Norwegian driftwood needles, why they would have a cord that is as stiff and not very, I don't know, I hate to say that it's not quality because the needles overall are a really great quality, but I'm just really unhappy with the cord on these needles. I feel like, it's incredibly stiff. I and I just posted a little um, kind of like knit tips video that I'm gonna start doing as a new video series on the channel about how to loosen up stiff cords. And typically what I do is I submerge them into really, really hot just um, before boiling water to loosen them. And that typically works and it keeps them loose and malleable, but I did it with these and they are kind of like right back to where they were when I opened the package. And so I'm really not very happy about that. That's kind of a huge deal breaker for me when it comes to circular knitting needles. These are a 32 inch. And the reason I got a 32 inch, actually, I don't know why I chose a 32 inch. Usually when I buy circulars, I buy 40 inches so I can just do magic loop um, on all of my projects. 
but I think also because these aren't a 40 inch and they're a 32 inch and I'm doing magic loop with them, it kind of contributes to the stiffness because you're not getting as loopy of loops. But regardless, I'm just really not very happy about the cables on these. It's They're just too stiff and it becomes a distraction. It slows you down a little bit. And when you're comparing them, um, like so many people mentioned after I posted that video, when you're comparing them to your Chiagus, it's like they don't even compare. Chiagus are so flexible, like, and they're not even very expensive needles. I feel like the Lika people need to get in touch with the Chiagu people. Share the love in that technology department, I guess. I don't really know. But anyway, that's kind of an issue that I'm having with these at the moment. It's just these cables are kind of a pain. But the needle tips themselves, the driftwood needle tips are really quite beautiful. I love working with them. They're nice and smooth and they don't present any problem. The the joins where the cables connect to the tips, is, it's also nice and smooth. It's just the stiff cables that kind of drives me crazy. But you know, that's my beef with the needles right now. But other than that, the project itself is a lot of fun to work. Basic vanilla shorty sock. I just started the cuff about a couple hours before I started podcasting and I'm already done with the cuff, moving on to the ankles. So they're super fast and I love the color. So, and just looking at how the speckles kind of even show up on a single strand of the yarn in this colorway is so cool. Like, I don't know if you're gonna be able to even see this, but I'll see if I can get it to, to show you. But you can see on that single strand of yarn, you can see the speckles coming through and it's so beautiful. I really love that about this yarn. It makes it really interesting to work with. It's kind of a really pleasant surprise when you see it, so. Yeah, that's the other half of my shorty house socks, um, vanilla house socks on my Lofty DK jewelry box base. These are actually living in a new project bag that was also gifted to me by Lauren when she gifted me the coffee mug. And I really, really love this. Um, this is by Gray Salt Designs, which is Ashley. She has an Etsy shop called Gray Salt Designs. Now she doesn't, apparently from what Lauren um, gathered when she picked this up at a, it was like a little craft fair. She doesn't make these bags specifically as knitting project bags. She just makes them as little bags. And it sounds to me like they don't typically come with a handle, but that she sewed the handle on so that I could have a little handle for my project bag. So this is by Gray Salt Designs, adorable little coffee themed fabric panel on the top and then the really nice gray, uh, almost like a denim canvas type on the bottom. It has a box bottom here, really nice interfacing, very, very sturdy, um, great box bottom for keeping it standing if you need it to. The handle's really nice, and then it's got a cute polka dot lining on the inside. And in addition to this, she also gave me a little Notions bag that goes with it. So the Notions bag I'm keeping inside and I'm keeping my little uh, shorty socks in here. So this is from Gray Salt Designs and that is Ashley um, and that is on Etsy. So there's the business card and I love it. Perfectly fits a sock project. It's a, it's a smaller project bag, but it's just right for a single sock project. They fit in there nicely and they don't take up too much space. Oh, and I just noticed, really cute. She has her logo stitched on the inside of the project bag right there so that is where i am keeping my little shorty socks last but not least out of all the projects i'm going to share with you guys today is my granny stripe blanket i am really excited about this i haven't made a huge amount of progress since the last time that we spoke but because so many of you recommended the magic knot to me um i learned how to do that and i am so thankful that so many of you brought that up to me to help me um, to help me avoid having so many ends to weave in later because as you can see so here's here's my blanket as you can see from just this little part right here I have all these little ends that are hanging out of the blanket in various different places that I'm definitely going to need to weave in later which seems to me to be a very daunting task but thanks to you guys thanks to this magic knot technique I don't have to worry about that anymore because I have mastered the magic knot and it is so simple I I don't know I'm just so thankful that I figured that out because now adding the yarn becomes not even a thing you don't have any ends that you have to weave in later the magic knot is super simple and fast 
and I've used it I think twice now and so what's going to happen is is as I continue to crochet the blanket um, the majority of the blanket is not going to have any ends there's going to be these little eyelashy type ends at the very bottom of my blanket <laughs> um, that I can weave in but at least it cuts that job down to a fraction of what it would have been had I not learned the magic knot so so I'm really thankful for that so I have um, these colors kind of going on in my blanket right now. I love how vibrant these colors are. These are all colors by Northbound Knitting, save for this um, really beautiful fig color here at the bottom. This is Fig by Long Dog Yarn. Um, that's the only color that is not Northbound Knitting. Everything else came in the Row 1 Northbound Knitting package. Um, and they're all very lovely. I'm obsessed with this little aqua color right here. This is the one I'm working on currently. Um, I really, really love that. But I, this is serious color therapy you guys if you haven't figured out or taught yourself just how to do a basic granny stripe stitch with crochet definitely do it I um when I approached this I didn't go with the intention of thinking I'm going to teach myself how to crochet and then I'm going to crochet a granny stripe blanket my kind of goal and trajectory was that I am going to teach myself how to crochet a granny stripe blanket. <laughs> and I figured at that point, um, if I could get that down, then all of the other aspects of crochet would eventually fall into place. Maybe I would be more familiar with the motion of my hand, um, the motion of the stitches, and then when it comes to learning other techniques within crochet, it would be less uh, taxing, less daunting. And so I definitely didn't approach the whole crochet craft the same way that I did knitting. Knitting was definitely, I'm going to learn all the ins and outs as I go so that I'm not only, you know, a well-read knitter, but I can also technique wise do all of the various different things. And I still can't do everything, but that was just kind of how I approached teaching myself to knit, but it was different with this. So I would recommend if you really want to do a granny stripe blanket, and I, I recommend that because it is a really lovely project to have going, just find a really great YouTube tutorial on how to knit a granny stripe blanket and just start there. Because if you have the basic idea of how to chain, um, which you can also find a really easy tutorial on YouTube of how to chain um, to create your initial foundation chain, the rest of it kind of falls into place with the tutorial that goes along with knitting a granny stripe. So that would be my recommendation to you. If you don't want to have to, you know, take all the classes or read the books about how to crochet from very the very beginning, you just want to do a granny stripe blanket is I would just find a really great tutorial on how to do a granny stripe blanket and get just get started. Um, even if it means you're going to just begin by doing a little granny stripe swatch, which is what I did, um, you'll realize so quickly that it is so simple. And then the whole process of crochet crochet is far less complicated um, than knitting and I'm, that, that isn't to say that I, I prefer it to knitting because I think that they have two totally different places in this fiber world um, and knitting will always be my first love but I just think that there's so many aspects of crochet that have less pressure involved um, and, and you'll find that it's just such a soothing project for that reason also just because the the motion of your hands as you're crocheting I just I really love it and like I said the color therapy involved in this is really something else now I know you don't have to make it a scrappy blanket you could definitely come up with a striped pattern um, whatever you want I mean it's completely up to you but I really love the fun aspect of just making it a scrappy blanket I love the kitschiness of the way it looks. I can just imagine it full size and finished hanging on the back of our couch and how cute that would be. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's just, I would highly recommend going forth with this project, making it a scrappy blanket, just because I think that's so cool. I think that's, that's what this project was meant to be done as, I guess, but I, I love it. I see the project bag that it's sitting in and I just, I want to bust it out and start working on it. Out of all the projects I'm working on right now, this and my bla baby blanket are the two that I, um, I see sitting there and I just gravitate towards them. They're my favorite because I think with everything going on, the, the soothing nature of those projects are really what I need right now. So definitely get yourself started on crochet if you haven't already done that. If you're a crocheter and you still have yet to to try the granny stripe blanket give it a shot because it's so calming and soothing we all need that in our lives and I love it so much this is actually living in a project bag by NSP designs and the so Nicole who is the talented sewist behind NSP designs she not only 
sent me this after I ordered it from her, which I love this so much. The fabric is insane. And considering how colorful the project is and this project bag, it's just a whole package. A beautiful, beautiful project bag, beautifully constructed. She also donated a project bag to the show for one of the prizes for the Year of Hats knit along. And in addition to that, she gifted me a little um, cozy for DPNs. It's a DPN cozy that you've seen before um, that you can stick your DPNs in as you're working on a tubular project. So your DPNs stay inside the cozy and your project kind of sticks out of this portion here. But I am actually keeping this inside my granny stripe project bag and I just stick my crochet hook in there. And it's not because I really need a cozy for my crochet hook because you can just stick your crochet hook in the project bag. But I actually like it because if I stick my crochet hook down in the project bag, it kind of gets intertwined with the other little bits of yarn that are in there, plus my project itself. So I kind of find that I like having a little matching cozy that I can put my crochet hook in. So that's what's going on in here. So my cozy and my project bag, they match. And this is NSP design. So Nicole, thank you so much for that. And I love your bags because... They're gorgeous and beautifully constructed. She posts on Instagram all these adorable project bags all the time. And it's just gotten to the point now where I have to just, you know, give it a like and move on or else I'm tempted to just go to her shop and buy all the project bags because they're adorable. So, so that's all I have when it comes to works in progress that I'm going to share today. I'll have some more to share with you guys on the next episode of the podcast. I will have more finished objects because there are a few works in progress that are so close to being finished that my goal is to have them finished so I can share them with you on the next episode of the podcast. But that's kind of what I'm going to share with you guys today. Let's keep our fingers crossed that my baby blanket is finished the next time that you see me. Because the next time that I see you, I am 36 weeks. Well, no, I'm not quite 36 weeks. I'm a little over 35 weeks right now. Um, so the next time that I see you guys, I will be close to 38 weeks. And I'll be, I'll be close to 38 weeks. Things will be getting close. And so I really want to get that baby blanket done. But um, it's exciting times right now, and I love having you guys be a part of that with me. So anyway, keep your fingers crossed for me that I can get that baby blanket done um, in time. So, But that's it for whips today. All right, guys, that's all I have for you right now. I know it seems crazy. It's such a short episode can, compared to what I usually have, but stay posted to the channel because like I said, I am going to keep my regular segments part of the Wool Needles Hands channel, but they are going to be separate segments on the podcast. And the majority of these segments as I upload them onto the channel are going to have a more vlog-like style to them. Some are gonna be more formal and structured, but most of them are going to be more vlog-like. I am gonna continue tips from the dyeing studio. I am going to continue the inner community. So please stay posted for all of the great segments that you love about the podcast, but just know that they are now going to be uploaded in chunks so that we can watch them a little bit easier with the time that we have, because I know we are all very busy people. And this way, it's not only easier for me to produce and bring them to you guys, but it's also just easier for us to watch them in a more manageable way. So keep an eye out for that. Thank you guys so much for sticking around, hanging out with me as I chat about some of the knitting that I have going on right now. I hope you guys had a really nice relaxing time and were able to get some knitting done as well. Don't forget to stick around at the end of the episode. I have a little treat that I want to share with you guys, a little clip from the Youthful Fiber Farm. It is a carding machine in action and I thought it was so cool when I saw the Youthful Fiber Farm share it on their Instagram. They emailed me the video so I could share it with you guys here. So definitely stick around after the episode for that. And then also that reminds me, here on the Wool Needles Hands podcast channel, I am doing a local yarn store call to action. That's where I ask you, the viewer, to go out into the wild to your local yarn stores, get some video footage, some photos, send it to me here at woolneedleshands at gmail.com so I can compile it into a montage of your local yarn store and share it here on the podcast and we can continue to broaden our perspective of the knitting community in various different places in the world. I have one coming up for you guys in the next episode of the podcast 
podcast that I'm really excited to share from Texas, from Eastern Texas. So that will be coming to you in the next episode. But like I said, stick around at the end of the episode for a little goodie from you with Full Fiber Farm. All right, guys, time for me to go. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Until the next time I see you on episode 23 of Wool Needles Hands, a knitting podcast. Happy knitting, happy whatever it is you're doing. Enjoy the rest of your week. Don't forget to check out the Fiber for the People shop update on Friday, March 2nd. And also to keep your eyes out for the shop update video that is coming to the channel quickly if it's not already uploaded. And I will see you guys soon. Bye. Hangus, my boy, hi. Did you have so much fun? Yeah. Come here.